Good afternoon, friends. This is such a pleasure to bring you this Bible study. And it, we have made it so that you can actually view it and study with it uh, at your convenience and at your leisure. There's so much going on in the world and there's so much fear and confusion and chaos that uh, God has made it possible so that we can record the Bible study lessons and then everyone is busy so you can do this at your own convenience. Let's just go to God in prayer and ask Holy Spirit to come join us. Father, we thank you. We honor you. You are Adonai. You are Elohim. You are the great I am. And we thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for all that you do. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for the great, marvelous love that you've lavished on us, that you call us your children. And we thank you, Lord, that it was because of your kindness and your compassion that we are your children. Thank you that as many of us who have received Jesus, your son, and embraced his name, you have given us authority as your children. So, Father, I pray for the listeners. I pray, Father, that you would encourage them. We pray for encouragement for them. I pray that you would strengthen them. And we come against the spirit of fear. We bind and rebuke the spirit of fear in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And we loose the fire of God against fear in the hearts of any, everyone, any and everyone who's listening. So thank you, Father. Thank you, wonderful Father, for your goodness. And Holy Spirit, we invite you into our midst. We cannot understand the things of God unless you reveal them to us. So Holy Spirit, teach us. Guide us into all truth. Open up our hearts to receive the wonderful seed of your word. And open up our ears to hear your word. Open up our eyes to see the things that you desire for us to see. Help us to grow in love and the knowledge of our wonderful Savior and Lord, Jesus Christ. So thank you, Holy Spirit. Be magnified and be glorified in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, we are going to, we are going to study the first Bible study that we did uh, when we first got to the lockdown because there was so much fear and uncertainty and it seems like things don't seem to be getting better with this virus and then the chaos and everything that's going, that's coming from the politicians and the news media and all of that. So we are going to study Psalms 91 again. And in, I, I uh, taught this lesson in March. And in case that uh, it, was, it was too much information, then I just encourage you to go back to the uh, go back and listen to this over and over again until it really really gets implanted into your hearts and uh, and uh, and then you will be strengthened and encouraged and you will have faith you will walk in faith that you are protected against this uh, demonic virus that seems to be uh, rampant not only in the United States, but all over the world. So I'm gonna, we're going to talk about Psalms 91. And uh, this Psalms is a Psalms of preservation and protection. It's one that uh, many, many believers, many, many uh, lovers of God depend on. They depend on this. So let's just dig in now. Let's dig in. And uh, Psalms 91, if you have your Bibles, you can just go along with 
us. Uh, and I am teaching from the New King James Version of the, of the Word of God. So, uh, and I usually teach from the Amplified or either the Passion, but uh, this particular study, I am coming from the New King James Version of the Bible. And our first verse is, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of of the Almighty. Now, the the first, the key word in this study is dwell. Dwell means to live. Uh, when people dwell in a house, or the or, or if if they have a dwelling, it is usually their home where they dwell. So it means to live, and it means to be inside of something. And Jesus said in John 15 and 4, to abide in me. And in some translations, it says to dwell in me and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide or dwell in me. And throughout the epistles, you often run across the term in Christ. In Christ. This is, this is when we have been born again and we are united in Christ. We are united to God the Father and we are in Christ because that is the only way that we can even approach the Holy God, the Elohim, the Adonai, and El Elyon, those are his names, Yahweh. We can't approach him without being in Christ. So to be in Christ means that we have been born again. The Holy Spirit actually gives us a new heart. And, and he takes out that old stony heart that it talks about in the Old Testament. He takes out the stony heart and he gives us hearts of flesh. He gives us hearts to obey him. Hearts that want to do what he commands us to do. Hearts that wants him to be exalted and, and magnified through us. And so that is what it means to be born again. In fact, it says that we are, if we be in Christ, we are new creatures or new creations. And uh, all things have become new and the old has been passed away. In other words, just a short version of that is we are not the same as we were when we received Jesus as our Savior. We are no longer that person. All of the sin and the rebellion and all of the things that we used to do, we no longer do them anymore because we don't want to do them. That new heart that, that uh, Christ gave us or Holy Spirit gave us, same thing. The new heart that the Holy Spirit gave us is a new heart that wants to obey God and has no desire to do the former things. Because it says, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creature. Everything or former things have passed away. And behold, all things are new. So, so that's what we're talking about. If we're in Christ, we are grafted in, joined to him by faith in him as our Savior. He is, uh, he is, uh, 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 he has made us new creatures, renewed by the Holy Spirit, and the old things, the moral and spiritual condition that we were in have passed away, and everything has become new. So when we are born again, we have now have access to the secret place. Now, the secret place is the very presence of God. And, and in Psalm 16 and 11, it says, In your presence is fullness of joy. It's fullness of joy. And at your right hand are pleasures evermore. This is where Jesus died for us to be. This is the place where our Father God wants us to be. 
in his presence where we can have fullness of joy. There's no stress. There's no worry. There's nothing to upset us or, or get us all nervous and anxious. That's in the presence of God. And at his right hand are pleasures evermore. There's joy unspeakable and full of glory in the presence of God. And so when we are in the presence of God, we are in the secret place. It's a place of love and peace and joy and protection from COVID-19. It's a place that the devil can't find and neither can he infiltrate. He can't come near us. When we are at, because we are in the secret place. And so we have Psalms 91 verse 2. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God and him I will trust. Jesus is the refuge. When, whenever you, you hear or read Lord, that is referring to Jesus. Jesus is our refuge and he is our fortress. Now, refuge is a condition of being safe or sheltered from pursuit or danger or trouble. When he, Jesus is our refuge, then danger cannot attack us nor trouble. We are in a shelter. We are in a hiding place. And fortress is a large place uh, or a stronghold that is impossible to penetrate. So Jesus is our trusted place. And so we can be confident that we are in the secret place. And you can even just put your hand on your heart and just thank, thank you, Jesus, that I am in the secret place. And, and the third verse says, Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. Well, what is the snare of the fowler? The snare is a trap and the fowler is another name for Satan. See, Satan is always laying traps for God's people. He's, he, he is consistent and persistent at trying to trap us. And a trap is a device or a hole for catching animals or people and preventing their escape. This is what Satan wants to do. He wants to catch us and prevent our escape so that he can destroy us. COVID-19 is a trap from Satan. I remember reading an account of someone that had COVID-19, and they were saying that this virus always looks, looks for the weakest people or, or it looks for the weakest part of our bodies. So that, and it will attack the weakest part of our bodies. And so you, we know where this virus comes from. COVID-19 is a trap from Satan. And so Satan will always look for the weakest, weakest part of us. He'll, he'll, he'll always try to find our weak spot. He'll always try to find a hole just to get in and to destroy, uh, destroy us and, and all of God's people. But the scripture says Jesus will deliver us from every trap and scheme of the devil. And verse 4. Let's go on to verse 4. It says he shall cover you. With his feathers. And under his wings. You shall take refuge. He shall cover you. With his feathers. And under his wings. You shall take refuge. And his truth. Shall be your shield and buckler okay so now let's talk about what does it mean by under his wings the wings that this scripture is referring to are the wings of the cherubim covering the mercy seat if any of you have all have ever seen a picture of the ark of the covenant 
that was in the tabernacle of Moses, then you will know what I'm referring to. And you can go back and find a picture. Just Google in a uh, Ark of the Covenant, and it will show you the cherubim, cherubim whose wings are touching, and they are, and the cherubim are actually looking down on the mercy seat. Well, the ark is a visible representation of God and his mighty power. And inside the ark is the pot of manna, an arrow's rod that budded, and the Ten Commandments. The lid was the mercy seat, the lid of the ark. They could open it up. Everything was, was um, covered in pure gold. And so the lid of the mercy seat represents Christ. Christ crucified is our mercy seat. And you have, if you can picture in your mind's eye, if you can picture uh, in the tomb, it is a, actually a picture of Christ in the tomb, lying in the tomb, and the two angels was at, uh, there was an angel at his head, and then there was an angel at his feet. And so uh, he was lying there. So that is a uh, that is what the mercy seat uh, depicted, which was some eight eight hundred years before Christ was crucified. So Christ is the mercy seat. He he died for us. He took everything. He finished everything on the cross. So he is the mercy seat. And in uh, and in the uh, New King James version of the Bible, it calls him. The propitiation, the propitiation, which is referring to him as the mercy seat. And in John 2 and 1 through 2, it, uh, the, John writes, My little children, my believers, dear ones, I am writing you these things so that you will not sin and violate God's law. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate who will intercede for us with the Father. Jesus Christ, the righteous, the upright, and the just one uh, who conforms to the Father's will in every way, purpose thought, purpose, thought, and action. And he, this same Jesus, is the propitiation for our sins. He is the atoning sacrifice that holds back the wrath of God that would otherwise be directed at us because of our sinful nature, our worldness, our lifestyle. And, and, but, but listen, not for our sins alone, but also the sins of all believers throughout the whole world. So our trusted place is under the wings in the perpetuation or the crucified Christ, with his feathers or his wings, he will cover us and he will protect us. So we can have confidence in Christ, in the mercy seat, that everything is washed away by his blood and that we are protected in him. So let's look at verse 5. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day. In verse 6, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. So, so the COVID-19 is the arrow that flies by day. The COVID-19 is a pestilence that is walking in darkness. The COVID-19 is the destruction that lays waste at noonday. At the time of, of this recording, right now in the United States, we have over 140,000 deaths. Now that's destruction. That is the arrow that flies by day and pestilence that walks in darkness. All of that is COVID-19. And so many people have lost loved ones without 
holding their hand or without giving them a hug or without even being able to say goodbye to them. So many people, when their loved ones were sick, they weren't able to come into the hospital to comfort them and lay their hands on them and pray for them. This is an attack and a trick and a scheme of the enemy. And the darkness is man's ignorance of the power of God as well as the evil realm of the enemy. The enemy loves to walk in darkness. If you see any, most sin occurs at night. The, the, the going out, the clubbing, the, the, the whatever, the, the immorality, the robbery, and the, and the murders, most of them, I'm not going to say all, occurs at night because the enemy is an enemy that, work, that works in the realm of darkness. And so we have this disease surviving in an, in an environment of darkness. It is above the level of intelligence of the darkness and the scientists. Now, and now they are learning more and more about it, but they always would, would admit we still don't know a whole lot about this virus. This virus is above the intelligence of the doctors and it's above the intelligence of the scientists. And they don't really know how it's tr transmitted because at one point it was only transmitted and dangerous to the senior citizens. And, and then they said over 50 and then they kept bringing the age down. Now they're saying that the young people in their 20s and 30s are carriers of this disease. And even yesterday, they were saying that 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 uh, children over the age of a, of a certain age, I believe it's over the age of ten, uh, are that they are carriers of the, this disease. They're finding new things out all the time, and so they don't really know how it's tr transmitted. You have people walking around with the disease that have no symptoms, and so and they don't know how to treat it. They're looking for a vaccine. There is no cure. But this disease, my beloved, is caused by the kingdom of darkness. And this disease has the intelligence of, of uh, that, that doctors and scientists have not wrapped their arms around yet. So, so, but the scripture says we shall not be afraid. We shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. And remember, going back to the first verse, because we are in the secret place. It's because we are in the secret place. And verse 7 says, a thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand. But it shall not come near you because you're in the secret place. So, so you can have people all around you falling and 10,000 around you falling at your right hand. But it shall not come near you. And we need to decree that. COVID-19 shall not come near me. Come on, speak it with me. COVID-19 shall not come near me. Amen. I heard that. I heard you say that. I heard you decree that. Because the Bible says that you can decree a thing and it will be established unto you. And you know, uh, 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 some are saying that 60% of the world's population will die. But we have the promise of the Lord. It shall not come near us. It shall not come near us. I want you to put your hand on your heart and say it again. Say it again. COVID-19 will not come near me. And let's look at verse 8. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. We're going, we as the beloved of God. We as born again children of God that have the authority of Jesus name, we are going to see, we're going to get to see how the Lord is going to repay that devil. 
He's going to repay Satan for killing thousands and thousands of people who are created in the image and likeness of God. He's going to get his. We're going to be, you are going to be blessed to see the devil get what's coming to him. And that is the promise of this scripture. Look at verse 9. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. And see, that's the thing. We who are born again, we made the Lord our dwelling place. We talked about that at the beginning of the lesson. The Lord who is our refuge, even the most high, nobody is higher than God. Even the most high, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor any plague come near your dwelling. Why will no evil befall us, nor any plague or COVID-19 come near our dwelling? Because we have made the Lord our dwelling place. We are in Christ. We dwell in him. We live in him. Because we abide in him and he abides in us. Because we dwell in him and he dwells in us. Listen, my beloved. When we properly position ourselves in him, we are in the light. And nothing from darkness can come, can overcome the light. Darkness can't overcome the light. You can have you can have a, a really pitch black room, but you light anything, something as small as, as a match. You strike a match, and it's going to have light around that match, and you're going to be able to see some. And so can you imagine when we are light in Jesus, how we will illuminate the darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome the light that's in us. We are protected in him. Outside of him in 24 hours we'll be gone. But in him our lifespan changes immediately. We'll hear about the virus from our position of in Christ. Whenever you listen to the news or you hear Somebody has it or, or how many have died. You are hearing about it from your position of being in Christ. So position yourself in him. Make sure that you are in the secret place. Make sure that you are positioned in Christ. No plague shall come near your dwelling. Now this is not talking about your home. This is not talking about where you dwell in the physical realm. No plague can come near your dwelling because your dwelling place is Jesus Christ. The plague, the pestilence is afraid of your dwelling place. Your dwelling place is Jesus Christ. So keep yourself in Christ. Keep yourself in Christ. The plague won't be able to find you or locate you when you're in your dwelling place. And again, it's not your house. It is not your house because you can have an asymptomatic person come into your house and care and be a carrier of the virus. And 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 you say, well, no plague is gonna come in my house, but if you are not in Christ, that plague can come in your house. But the plague can't not come in Christ. It's afraid to go near Christ. It's afraid to come close to you because you are so saturated with your Lord and your Savior. You are so saturated with the Holy Spirit that that plague won't dare come near you. So the plague can't locate you when you're in your dwelling place. So don't be afraid. Fear not. Jesus often said, fear not. He was telling the disciples or the people, fear not. 
We are not here. We are God put us here not to die early. We're here to live and declare the glory of God. In Psalms 118 and 17, the psalmist declared, and we can declare this too, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. See, we can't afford to have demons outsmarting you. And outsmarting us, rather. We cannot afford to have demons outsmarting us. Because we are in Christ. Christ has been made unto us wisdom. So we are the wisdom of God through Jesus Christ. You are of God, little children. 1 John 4 and 4, it says. And have overcome them. In other words, you overcome the world of darkness. Because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Oh, that's shouting ground right there. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Who is them? The kingdom of darkness. The, 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 the demons and the evil spirits that Satan might send to attack you. You have overcome them because he who is in you or in us is greater than he who is in the world. So let's just make that decree. Greater is he in me than he who is in the world. And I am an overcomer. Let's just do that one more time. Greater is he in me than he who is in the world. And I am overcome them. So we must appreciate the importance of our position in Christ Jesus. We are seated together in Christ. In heavenly places. What happened when we became born again? What happened when we, we gave our lives, we surrendered our hearts and our lives to Christ? Then after the Holy Spirit has recreated us, made us new creatures, then uh, he seated us together. He raised us up from the death of sin. And he seated us in Christ, in the heavenly places, far above all power, might, and dominion, and names that are named, even the name of coronavirus or COVID-19. So, so we can take comfort in the word, in the promises of God. Uh, and it says in uh, Ephesians 2 and 4, but God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us. Verse 5, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I love that is one of my favorite scriptures because it did not stop with salvation. God, our Father, actually placed us in Christ and then we became raised together and we are seated. Our position of authority is in Christ in the heavenly realm. So, so Christ is our dwelling place and we are protected in Christ. Just say, I'm protected in Christ. I'm protected in Christ. And so we can be confident. We can, we can stop being fearful, stop being anxious. Yes, we must wear masks. That is, a, that is the law of the land. We must wear masks, keep social distancing, but you don't have to be afraid of that devil and all of his forces of darkness because they can't touch you because you are in, in Christ, in Christ. And it is important in these difficult and uncertain times, if you are unsure of your position in Christ, 
or you have not yet fully and completely positioned yourself in Christ, then I want to pray with you. See, what has happened is we are no longer, we can no longer actually meet in a place, in a house of worship. And so, uh, you know, I have heard so many people say uh, just because they attend church that they are say I don't even really like to use that term saved because it's, it's misunderstood and misused in so many ways and so many times. I like to use the word born again. That means you are you have been changed. You are a new person. You are no longer that old person that, that like to sin, that love to do the things in rebellion to God. You have a new heart. And you have a new creature in that, and you are a new creature in Christ. So I want to pray with you, and I want to, uh, and so that you can be sure that you are in Christ, because this scripture is only written to those who are in Christ and that have that have uh, uh, declared that He is our dwelling place, and so we want to make sure. Uh, Jesus loves you so much that he just hung there and bled all of his blood out of his body. And it was spilled and sprinkled on the mercy seat. And so, and so uh, I've already read the that scripture of any man's sins. He has, uh, uh, Christ is a propitiation. If we sin, we have an advocate. Or a, or a lawyer that, that fights for us. And that's Jesus Christ. And so I want to pray with you. And I want you to pray. Even if you have slid away from God. It happens. It happens. Because we are not able to meet together. Uh, uh, and, and it is a difference. The, the, the uh, meeting together in a sanctuary where the presence of God dwells and then meeting together virtually. It is a difference, but we must make the best of it and we must depend on Holy Spirit to teach us and guide us and speak to us whenever he wants to, whatever he wants to. So I want you to pray. Uh, even if you are saved, you can still pray because we never, it's never uh, too many times to pray and thank God for Jesus and thank Jesus for giving his life for us. So we're going to pray and mean it with all of your heart as if your life depends upon it, and which it really does. Because when we, when we are born again, we pass from death to life. We pass from death to life. Remember uh, in, in Ephesians 4, I just read, but God who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive with Christ. For by grace, you have been saved. So, so let's pray. And, and, and uh, even if you have slid back some, even if you have gotten away from, from your discipline of, of spending time with him, which is so important, I encourage you to, to get that back. Spending time in his word, getting to know him in a personal way, a personal relationship. Even if you've sl slid back from that, then let's just pray. Let's just pray. And we're going to pray. And I, I just want you to just, just uh, bow your head and close your eyes and just lift up your hands and just pray to our wonderful Savior, our loving Savior, who loves you more, loves us all more than he even loved himself. Lord Jesus, I don't understand what's going on in this world. I don't understand what's going on, but I know that you love us. And I know that you will protect us 
when we cry out to you, your, your word promises that, that if we cry out to you, you have not forsaken those who seek you. And so I, I may not have seen all of the things that I'm seeing now in my lifetime, but I understand that I must not only get my heart right with you, but I must keep my heart right with you. I understand, I know that I know that I know that outside of you, I have absolutely no protection or safety whatsoever. So I come to you, Lord Jesus, and I repent of my sins. I repent of my rebellion against you. I'm sorry that you had to suffer and die for my sins. So right now, Lord, I turn away from everything that separates me from you. You show your love for me by shedding your own blood. And dying on the cross in order to cleanse me from my sins and to give me eternal life with you. Today, I surrender my life to you withholding nothing. I surrender my life to you withholding nothing. Take my life, Lord, and make me what you want me to be. You take control because I have messed up. I messed up my life. I've tried to do things on my own, but now I give it to you. Thank you for loving me so much that you gave your life for me. So now I'm giving my life back to you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving me. Thank you for eternal life with you. And thank you for your good, good plan for my life. I ask you and I thank you for saving me in the mighty name, in your mighty name. Amen. Well, I am so glad to have spent this time with you. I apologize for my phone. I, before I began recording, I forgot to turn down the volume. So I'm sorry about that. But I hope that you will take this, this lesson, these truths, and go, at, go back and listen again. Search the scriptures that I have uh, mentioned here in the study. Search them and study them. And, and spend some time. You might not think it's, a, it's anything to just spend five minutes. But five minutes just dedicated to Jesus is so precious to him. He loves it when we come to him. So even if, it's five, even if it's five minutes, if it's 10 minutes, if it's 15, don't try to keep up with anybody else. No, no matter how long they may spend. But you spend time just de dedicated completely to Jesus. Turn your phone off, which I failed to do. Turn my volume off. But turn your phone off. And, just, and the first thing you say, here I am, Lord. I am spending this time with you. Thank you for this time. Turn the TV off and the Facebook or the Instagram or all of that. Turn all those things off and just give Jesus some time. I mean, that's the least that we can do because he gave his life. We can present our bodies as living sacrifices. Sacrifice time. Sacrifice a little TV. Sacrifice um, uh, time on Facebook and all of the social media. Sacrifice that. Dedicate every day some time with him. If it's five minutes, if it's 10, if it's 15, if it's 30, they are, those, those times are so precious to God. And so I love you. And I encourage you, and I wanna, uh, I just wanna pray a closing prayer for your safety, and uh, the, and your spiritual growth, that you would desire the sincere milk of the Word of God, so that you may grow thereby. That's Second Peter. That's First Peter two. I'm sorry, First Peter two. So, um, so I'm just gonna pray and give you the parting blessing. 
and uh, God told uh, Aaron, Moses and Aaron, to just speak these words over his people, and he would put his name on them, and he would bless them. So we want to pray, Father, we just love you. We love you because you love us. You first loved us. Lord, we didn't get this love up on our own, but it was deposited in us through Jesus Christ, our Lord, through his death and his resurrection. So we thank you, Father. Father, I pray for those who, are, who have tuned in to, to this uh, Bible study. Father, I pray that you would just draw them closer to you, as only you can do. That you would give hunger and thirst. You would give them hunger because, Lord Jesus, you are the bread of life. That you would give them thirst after you because you are the living water. And who he who drinks will never thirst, will never thirst, Lord, of the things of the world that we used to participate in. And you, are, you will satisfy our hunger for anything else but you. So thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for this lesson. Father, may these, these truths uh, uh, be implanted into the hearts of your people. And Lord, may it bring forth fruit, maybe 30-fold, maybe 60-fold, maybe 100 times as much that was that was planted. So thank you. Thank you, Father. We love you. And now the parting blessing, if you lift up your hands, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. Be gracious unto you and give you his shalom. So go, my beloved. In the shalom of God. Love all you. Bye bye for now.